Well, you mentioned Pelledri. Did I? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, you did. Which is which is a good thing. How convenient. Because he's on the phone now. Oh. How are you, buddy? Not too bad, thanks, mate. Yourself? I'm good. Congratulations on the big win. Thank you very much, yeah. How was it then? Obviously, going down as a Gloucester player, going down to Sandy Park. Um, yeah, there's big things happening at Gloucester this year. We're seeing some consistency. Um, Exeter, Sandy Park, a place that I don't think they've lost for in over a year, really. Um, what was the chat before the game about how you're going to go down there and win, and then how good was the feeling afterwards in the changing room? Yeah, it was um, obviously, as you said, it was a really tough place to go. I don't think you know, many of the people said it's never been a nice day when we go down there. Um, the weather's never been decent or anything like that. So we, we knew it was going to be a tough game. Obviously, going against Exeter, big physical side, the, the big scrimmaging side, uh, and they love their pick and go, um, as everyone knows. But um, yeah, I think the plan for us was just to go out there, do what we do. Like we got to pick the tempo up a little bit, um, kind of play the way we like to play, um, and, and take it. So I think even in the conditions, you know, at one point it was hammering down with rain, but um, we still managed to score some decent tries which shows the kind of, you know, the game we're trying to play. Um, and yeah, the, the, the feel after was in the, in the change room was, was real good. I think, you know, obviously we've had today to review the game a little bit, but, um, you know, we, we, the coaches wanted to stay humble, obviously. And, and we, we put, it's almost as if we, we had lost the game on the weekend. They, uh, they, they were um, obviously making sure that we, we get all, all the things we, we did wrong in the game and putting them right. But um, in terms of the change room, obviously it's a great feel to go down there and win. And as you said, it was a, uh, not many people do that, so it was it was a real good atmosphere to be involved in. And then talking about the game, you, you talk about Exeter's pick and go game, their power game that they use so well in the Premiership. Not so much in Europe at the minute, but um, you absolutely love that physical battle. You, Ben Morgan, Slates was phenomenal as well. You must have loved the battle on on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. I think you know we we highlighted their their, their strengths like that, and, and we we just wanted to take it to them. And, and trying to beat them at their own game and, and really take it, you know, in terms of being a forward battle. And, and I think we, we showed that on the weekend. And, you know, they, they love, you know, whenever they get anywhere on the pitch, really, they love their pick and go game. And then to show that we, we can do the same and then have a bit of flair out the back as well, it, it, it was brilliant, really. Nice. Jake, it's Joe Marler here. How are you, Joe? Right? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. Yeah, good. good. This is a bit weird, isn't it? Talking to. Yeah. <laughs> as if, you know. It's it nice. What do you mean it's nice? It's, it's nice. easy for you. You don't play anymore. I, know, I nice. play against him. I know, it's nice for you too. We've got both. to pretend to not like each other and that. You don't have to not like people you play against. You just have to not like them on that day. Well, that's how it works for me. Okay. Anyway, uh, I've got some questions for you, um, Jake Pelledri. Yeah, no worries. Um, serious, half serious, not so serious. We'll see. Do you vass up your legs? <laughs> no, uh, no, you, I don't. You don't vass up your legs or any part of like your lower body no. before games? I mean, I'm a serious sweater. Um, that might be. No, I'm joking. I, I literally don't. Uh, no, is the answer. Uh, that's that one. bollocks. So that's a lie because <laughs> the reason I ask is because he's incredibly. I don't want. I don't see. This is what don't doesn't sit away. comfortably with me. Okay. Blowing smoke up opposition. Well, you're not playing this week, so it don't matter. No, but in the future, you know what I mean. Um, he's ridiculous. You're ridiculous to tackle, mate. I can't. You wriggle out of everything. He's one of the yeah. hardest blokes, except Billy, for different reasons to tackle. Um, yeah. And I'm convinced <laughs> you smell like KY jelly or Vass. <laughs> People still use Vaseline. What do you uh, mean? Well, ask Jay. He's the one who's using it. <laughs> the only time I've seen uses on their heads and on their eyes to sort the cuts. But uh, well, and of course me on my legs, as, as Joe suggested. Yes, but, uh, exactly. Um, yeah, no, I, I've been told that, but I don't really, I don't really have any technique or anything. It's just, uh, yeah, you just get I, really I, aggressive and just run really hard, is it? Yeah, right. yeah, it's, it's something like that. Some, I think. isn't it? He's just hard, hasn't he? Oh, I can't blow any more smoke. I've done my bit. He's you, done your bit. Anyway, uh, back to you, buddy. Uh, and some serious questions now. Obviously, I can hear it in your accent, uh, the Italian twang coming out on you. Um, yeah. How's that, how's that been? Because <laughs> obviously, yeah, you go back sort of, what is it now, 18 months ago, you're playing for Hartbury uh, and working yeah. in Subway. And we'll come to Subway in a minute because I, I know your dad's got a few... Uh, yeah, uh, franchises sure. that I need to get some. He's what? He's got some franchises for Subway, so we'll get some credit. Anyway, um, let's talk about <laughs> going and playing for Italy. Obviously, it's been a breakthrough last six months for you, um, for Gloucester. And you know, as Joe says, he doesn't want to blow smoke up your ass anymore, but I will. You've been phenomenal. Um, and obviously, you've got background with Italy, uh, your grandparents and all that stuff. Did Eddie Jones get in touch at all? Or, and are you fully fledged happy playing for Italy now? Or is there a little bit of you that thinks, oh, you know, I wish I'd have played for England? 
Um, I think he he never actually knows. So the answer to that would be no. He didn't. He never got in touch. Um, obviously, Connor was Connor was on the blower. Um, you know, th- throughout when I first signed with Gloucester, uh, just to show that he was you know watching and, and knew that I had that through the twenties. He obviously knew that I had that connection with the grandparents. Um, yeah, and I think you know, I, as much as I'd probably say, you know, they've had a bit of injuries in the back row, so probably could have been opportunities come recently but you know when when everyone's fully like fully fit there's obviously a lot of competition there and um i know if i was if i was going to go back in time i'd still definitely do the same route that i went i think you know playing with the italians is a bit of a you know a, a longer process and we're still you know like kind of gelling as a team but i think you know obviously we got absolutely smoked by the the, the kiwis but uh you know kind of the australia game where we we showed a bit you know we were competitive and uh, beating georgia um, you know, it, it's a nice and exciting you know, place to be involved in. It's kind of like Gloucester, you know, with the saying that we, we've got an up-and-coming team and now we're starting to gel. Um, so, yeah, I think they're definitely enjoying and made the right decision there. And let's go back to take it back a step further. And obviously, we're talking about your grandparents. Let's move on to your dad. Uh, Pete was a bit of a Bristol legend. When I say a bit of a Bristol legend, he was a massive Bristol legend. Um, firstly... How does he feel about you playing for Gloucester? And then, secondly, um, you were released by Bristol as a teenager, I think, weren't you? Uh, I was. I was in the academy setup. Yeah, so I was never actually officially contracted uh, with with Bristol. They just never signed me as a youngster. But I stayed in Bristol, played for Dings Crusaders at the time. Oh, actually, Dings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a place! I'm a fan against Dings. <laughs> do you remember playing from the Worthing oh, Raiders? Horrible. In Worthing fact, Raiders. Yeah. You see, I've remembered. Yeah, you do. Nice. Yeah, I think I might have put corner. Dings. Yeah, I might have put Dings as the worst atmosphere, not worst, but most intimidating place I've ever played at. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it's that horrible. Effect. They've they, they've actually moved now. They've actually moved to a really nice stadium that's got a 4G. You'd never believe it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't really think you were walking into Dings. Because yeah. I do remember when I came out and said that Dings was horrible, a lot of them got into contact with me to abuse me and say, how fair, dare you? Fair. How dare you slag off our club? <laughs> I was like, well, the fact that there was stones and glass all over the pitch. <laughs> but I'm glad that the 4G pitch is going well for them. Nice. And who was, yeah. so who, who was the coach at Bristol at the time? It's, it's got to be Andy Robinson, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah! yeah. What a cowboy. Um, yeah. Uh, let's go on to about, talk about your dad. Uh, obviously, he was a Bristol legend, wasn't he? How does he feel about you playing for Gloucester? Because back in the day when he was playing, that, that was a huge rivalry, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a massive rivalry. He was really like obviously you know he was really upset that the fact that Bristol um, never actually nothing ever came of it. Um, obviously that would have been a great you know story in terms of media and and a real passion of like his for me to play for Bristol and um, but you know he's, he's got used to it now. He's, just, he's actually a season ticket holder because um, I told him I can't get any more free tickets every week, <laughs> so he's had to go and buy buy a season ticket, which is, which is good. Um, so he's he's there every week, and you know it's obviously got, I imagine a bit of getting used to last year. But um, I would like to say he's, he's a, a, a full Gloucester supporter now. Um, not that you wear any kit, but um, as such, you, you, you watch the games. <laughs> Christmas so shirt, buy my jersey. He's a full, he's a full <laughs> Gloucester supporter, but he refuses to wear the kit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. like that. Talk me, yeah. um, talk me through the subways, then, mate, because this is the first I've heard of this. Yeah, uh, funny how you're interested in those, isn't it? Well, so uh, I'll be honest with you. When, when I got wind of this, I was oh my god, it made me want an Italian BMT with southwest sauce, yes, gherkins, mm. onions, a little bit of salad, and double cheese. Yes, nice, yeah, and obviously cheese. a foot long. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I might have a cookie and <laughs> packet of crisps. Yeah, 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 all right, I do the I do the deal. It's great. It's, it's, it's really great. I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so your old boy's got he's got a few franchises, hasn't he? And you were actually yeah. Six Nations last year. Your Playing for Italy, and then yeah. coming back and doing a shift in Subway, aren't you? Uh, well, it, it, it's a long year of suspensions now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been. That might have been just a bit of a talked up story there. But the, <laughs> go with it. Go with it. Stay <laughs> humble. Stay humble. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was the season before I signed with Gloucester. I was working literally in Subway up till you know a week before I had to turn up. Um, so I gave myself a week to get into shape. You know, um, so. It, uh, literally a week before I started with, with Gloucester, I was working in there, and he's got a cafe as well, which I was working in. But he, he's got uh, four subway franchises: two in Bristol, and two in Western Supermare. Um, so yeah, I was just working in between those, you know, those four bra- uh, branches just to, uh, you know, fill the slots with Hartbury because obviously Hartbury was semi-professional, so that is to kill a bit of time. And seriously, do you want to sponsor the podcast and send a load of vouchers? That is to me? I, <laughs> there is actually a need for a subway in Heathfield, East Sussex. Right. 
Um, okay. And I've got a little bit more free time on my hands now. You so have, Joe. after this, it would probably be good if we could uh, maybe exchange some numbers. Um, yeah. And I could talk I'll put to your old man. And, if yeah. I can pull some strings. Yeah, cool. Nice. Uh, Sorry, lads. I see you want to talk to him now, you see. What no, you you're being nice, Joe. No, I said... You're being nice now. You want something. You're being nice. That is so mm. typical of you. All right, piss off, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, and just looking forward to this weekend. Obviously, you've done the supposed hard work in winning down in Exeter. Uh, these back-to-back games are really special, aren't they, in the Champions Cup? Yeah. Um, Exeter coming back to town on Friday. They'll be hurting. I actually read that Don Armand said they're still in the competition if they can come and get a win. So uh, you can understand why Ackerman and the coaches have been saying it's um, you know, not a job that well done yet uh, and it, you said it felt like a, a loss at times but how focused are you going into this game and uh, how are Sips' golden wrists that's all I want to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah, we're really obviously focused it's a massive game because obviously we, we you know we went to their backyard uh, and did one over on them so they'll be coming they'll be coming back you know you know, looking for that revenge so we've already we've already talked about that so we know that they're going to come all firing um, and as I said if, if, they, if they win there um, as Donovan said, that, that they'll be still in, still within a chance. So we need to, um, yeah, you know, we talked about giving that extra ten percent for the, for the weekend. It's, it's going to be you know Friday night game at Kings. Hall. I mean, they probably won't like coming up there on a Friday night, but you know that's that's something we can we'll look at and, and deal with. But yeah, a Golden wrist, he, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they'll be fine and, and, and firing. Um, and he'll definitely tell you they'll be they'll be good, and he, he's going to be um, having a cracking game, no doubt. He'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's going to be good. So I'm looking forward to that. He certainly will be telling everyone. Last question from me then. Uh, going back to the subway th- for theme. Go back to the subway theme because I love subways. At Gloucester, who's got a six inch and who's got a foot long? Oh, for <laughs> Christ's sake, he's obsessed. <laughs> Jake, wow. ignore just, him. He's a child. He's or just a giant, giant child. child. Tell me who's got a foot long. <laughs> it's a giant child. <laughs> no, Jake, that is. Be- just ignore him. <laughs> Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm probably not going to release that information. Oh. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Text <laughs> I'm sure me. if you ask other people, they might tell you. Text me. It's not Cipriani. Jake Lee, yeah. thank you very, much, thank you very much for coming on, uh, and uh, best of luck no for problem. the remainder of the comp, and especially this weekend against Exeter. Jake, see you thank later, you mate. Much. Cheers, Cheers mate. See you later. Oh, well, good luck, Joe. Thank you.